Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. This is Greg, and today Jessica will be making some lavender roses, and they'll be part of a Valentine's Day spring assortment, a bouquet of different color roses. They're going to have white, yellow, orange, pink, dark red, and of course purple roses in this assortment, and possibly much more. When this video was shot, we hadn't finished making all the roses. Jessica has heated the sugar solution to 310 degrees Fahrenheit, and she's pouring it on our candy cooling table. This candy cooling table will cool the candy dramatically, but before it cools completely, we have to add the food coloring. And we do that, and we stir it in, and it starts bubbling because it's boiling. There's some water in this food coloring, and we don't want the water to end up in the candy. So to get rid of it, we just stir it fast, and all the water boils off into steam. You may have noticed a white streak in the food coloring. We rarely use white food coloring, but this is one of the times it makes a difference. We're trying to get two different shades of an opaque color, and we've got to make the clear opaque, and we do that with the food coloring. We make the lighter color opaque by pulling it. Just watch, you'll see. The candy is now cooled on the table, and actually it made such a perfect fit to the table that it's acting like a suction cup, holding itself down to the metal cooling table. So. Jessica uses this tool and she breaks the suction which allows her to cut it and pull the sugar and pull it out and drip it. Now the dripping of the sugar is actually pretty important. We want the cool bits on top and the hot bits to get against the cool metal surface. So if we hold it up and we let the candy run out, the hot bits being more fluid run down to the bottom and we get to stack the cool bits on top. It allows us to even out the temperature more evenly and more easily. The candy we make here at Lofty Pursuits traces its roots directly to the Victorian period. A lot of our equipment was made prior to 1900 and our recipes de definitely date back that far. Our techniques too. And in the Victorian period, the Victorians had an interesting relationship with flowers. They used them to communicate. And this communication technique was called floriography. And it was commonly known how to combine a bouquet of flowers to send a specific message. And we thought, that might be fun to do with Victorian candy flowers. In this case, our roses. Jessica takes part of the purple and puts it on the hook to pull. Pulling the candy on the hook will add lots of tiny air bubbles and will lighten the shade from a dark purple to a light purple. We'll need two tones to make this candy look like a flower and we'll have two shades of purple when we're done. One shade that we didn't pull, one shade that we did. We miss floriography often when we're reading old books, and this is because we're not sensitive to it anymore. In Shakespeare and Hamlet in Act 4, Ophelia picks up fennel. It symbolizes remembrance for Hamlet who's forgotten her, and the rue symbolizes regret. The violets symbolize modesty which withered all when my father died and that was the same time she became mad. Ophelia is constantly depicted with daisies, and this symbolizes her innocent and her forsaken love. So, if you know this language, you can pick up a lot more out of some great literature. And to help you do this, in the description of this video, you're gonna find a link to a PDF from the time. Somebody's been very useful in archive.org and scanned in a book on floriography. The center of the rose has a little spiral in our design, and Jessica's going to make that spiral with two different shades of the purple. If you find a bunch of old books on symbolism, you're going to discover a few of them agree. And that's true with these flowers as well. And these books are more specific than the color of the flower. They're actually talking about the variety. Roses could mean everything from unconscious beauty to only deserving of my love, to love that is dangerous, beauty that's always new. It can symbolize pride, grace, variety, even war. And then you can mix these. A red and white rose together means unity. A full flower placed over two rosebuds can mean secrecy. There are lots of the symbolism and I'm sure some is lost to time. Jessica's gonna craft the leaves for her roses and then two colors are gonna be combined to make the petals. There are hundreds of flowers that have translations. And of course, there's a modern translation of this symbolism, and we'll link to that as well. Where traditional red roses mean I love you and desire. A white rose means charm and innocence. A pink rose means perfect happiness. This lavender rose here means love at first sight. And you can combine this stuff. You can have purity and love at first sight at the same time. The orange rose in this assortment, which is peach flavor, can mean fascination. 
So you can make love that is fascinating in this just by putting two of these together. Heck, you can combine our little roses and tell a story every time you eat some of our candy. And this kind of makes me happy. These videos are about storytelling as much as candy making, and I may have found a way to tell stories by eating candy. Just to add to all the links in the bottom of the description this time, we're also going to include a link to the Tally Awards. We're up for the Tally Awards for Best Dessert Location in Tallahassee, and we'd love you to vote for us. You can find the link there, and if you're online, you can vote for us. Also, if you want to try these candies for yourself, you can go to our website, www.pd.net. We put the green that will represent the leaves into the clear wrap around the candy, and then we wrap it around the core that is the purple rose itself. Jessica likes to pinch off the unicorn dropping on the batch roller. Then she carefully scales her artwork down. She takes it from about 6 to 8 inches in diameter down to about a half inch in diameter for the final pieces. You can even find floriography going back to ancient Turkey. This is where it originated. But if you think about it, symbols like this, flowers that communicate or icons that communicate, is something in today's society. Wouldn't floriography just be a Victorian version of emojis? Just look at all the heart emojis that mean different things, and look at the flowers that mean different things. And you can also combine emojis to make sentences, just like they combine flowers to convey more complicated ideas. And this all goes back to pictographs, the type of languages which developed into Chinese and ancient Egyptian. And now we're developing again with little smiley faces, hearts, and piles of poop. I wonder what the ancient Egyptians or the Victorians would think of the icons we've chosen to use. All that's left is for Jessica to cut all this candy and turn them into little pieces. And then at the end, we'll show you mixing our full assortment together. And Jessica's done it, because there's the Purple Rose of Tallahassee. Not quite a movie plot, but it makes a good candy video. And of course, it's one of a large variety that we've made that's in this assortment. And it's only here for a limited time. About a week after this video was shot, Greg got to blend all the colors together of the rose assortment, and here he is. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us here on YouTube and make sure you click the little bell for notifications. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we give advance notices of new designs out in email if you sign up for our email list at www.pd.net. If you want to try this candy for yourself, you can go onto our website, www.pd.net, or you can come visit us in our store. We're in Tallahassee, Florida. We're right off the Thomasville Road exit of I-10, and we'd love to see you. We're open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. We have an excellent soda fountain where we make great ice cream treats. We serve brunch seven days a week, and we make candy most days, but not all of the day and not every day. So if you're lucky, you might get to see us make candy. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. And don't forget to click that link and vote for us, and thank you for watching as always.